being able to construct a cross section is a basic geological skill, but many people find it quite tricky. So let's try and demystify this. So this is a video where we'll go through the basics of drawing a geological cross section from a geological map, this area around Glen Cool in the Moyne Thrust Belt. We'll use some map strips, a pencil, a straight edge, some colours. That's all we'll need for drawing the cross section. Right, so the first thing to do is to decide on our line of section. We'll do it on the one that's been already drawn for the map. And we draw the section line onto the map so we know where we are. And we make a mark so we know where we're starting from when we come to transfer information from the map onto our section plane. OK, I've drawn some other lines onto this map, which we'll use later, which are structure contours on um, three boundaries on the map. First, though, let's transfer the information from the section line onto a profile. OK, so we'll draw a line of section onto the paper. So we'll put a horizontal line that's going to represent sea level. The next thing we need to do is get the scale correct. So I'm just using a piece of this map strip, just any old off cut of paper, to measure one kilometre the spacing of the grid lines on the map. And I'm taking that onto our profile. So this will be the scale of the cross section that we're going to draw. So that is one kilometre. That's the horizontal scale. We want to make the horizontal and vertical scales equal. So I'll take that scale and put it here onto our profile, so that's one kilometre and at the other end, just for reference one kilometre OK, I'm just going to gently rule those together so that we get the scale correct like this, we can divide that up Use it centimeters. Use that up. I can see that the scale of that is twenty-eight centimeter, twenty-eight millimeters to the kilometer. So fourteen is one is five hundred. Um, and okay, just line that up. Seven is two fifty, which we'll use. Let's just plonk that down here. 7 is 250. I just want to put that one on because it's a useful one, but that's not. Okay. Just join those up. And we can just join these up. Like this. A couple of parallel lines. Something like that. So that's 250, sorry, that's 500, that's 250, that's zero. OK, so now we've got a scaled section where vertical and horizontal scales are equal. The perspective of this sketch is slightly strange, but they're parallel when you look straight down on the uh, piece of paper. Now let's transfer information from the map to the profile. And we're going to start off by putting the topography on. And we put our reference point here, which is the same as this reference point on our line on the map. OK, so let's put on the coastline. So take our map strip, measure to here and measure into the coast. Take that information and put it onto our profile. So that's the distance back to the coastline. Now we can do the same to put the topographic detail into this area here. OK, let's continue. So there's the reference point, there's our coastline, and we can continue up, there's 50, 100, 150, 200, 200 comes in a couple of times there, so that's roller coastering along, that's 250, let me just check I've got that, that's 200, 150, 100, 50, 0, here we go, that's 300, 
350. No, it's not. So that's 250. Easy to make a mistake doing that. That's 300. That's 350. 400, 400, 400, 400. So all that's, we'll just call that all 400. Okay, so it shows the point of just looking really carefully to make sure we've got these picks correct because if we get them wrong now, it will propagate errors into the rest of our diagram. So just checking 0, 50, 100, 150, 200, 250, 300, 350, 400. So now we take these measurements and transfer them onto our profile. Line up. To the reference point there's zero I'll put 250 on because it's there and we'll just eyeball this in so that's going to be 200 200 200 50 150 and down so that's that's our profile coming out of the sea like this climbs up that little escarpment or steep hillside that's 300 350 400, 400, 400. So that's just going to simply climb up like that and that reaches the high ground there. So that's our topographic profile. Now we do the same thing, transferring the geology from here and put it onto our topographic profile. So I'll clean this up and start again. There's the reference point and we measure that far in, we get to the base of the quartzite, that's the boundary between the pipe rock, that's the base lower Q, that's a little brown smidge and there is the Glen Cool thrust which continues as a thrust sheet over here. So let's take that information and put it onto our profile. Here we go, line up our reference point. So that is where the lower quartzite comes in. That's the pipe rock. On here, that's where the thrust comes. Okay, and just so we know where we stand, let's add some color. So we start at the coast, we go up through St. Louisian. We've got some lower quartzite, which I've just put in in the darker blue. Light blue for the pipe rock through here, quite a wide outcrop trace to here. I'm not going to show that brown slice because it's a bit thin for the scale of the section. We can allow space for it. And then there's Louisian all the way through this high ground through here. Right, so that's the surface geology. What happens below ground, which is the point of this exercise? So on the map I've already sketched out some structure contours. Let's look at this one here. What I've found is where the base of the lower quartzite comes down to the water's edge at sea level, there, and I found the equivalent place on the other side of this peninsula here, where the base of the quartzite comes down against the water's edge. And joining these up is a structure contour where the base of the quartzite is at zero meters at sea level. So I can take that and use it to help me draw the cross section. So back to the map strip. Tick on here so we know where we're measuring from. And I'm measuring back to where this structure contour intersects the line of section there. And that's zero meters on the base of the lower quartzite. And I take this now and transfer this information onto my line of cross section. So this is where the base of the lower quartzite is at zero meters at sea level, which is there. And now I can simply join these up to show how the surface outcrop of the base of the lower quartzite projects to sea level. I can do the same now with the top of the lower quartzite and it intersects sea level here and on the other side of the peninsula here. Again I can join those up to create a structure contour of 
value zero meters for the top of the lower quartzite. I can take that information to the profile by measuring back. Here's the structure contour, here it intersects the line of section just there, so that is PR, base of the pipe rock, top of the lower quartzite. Take that, transfer it onto my line of section here, that's where it is, and again take the surface geology and join it up. So there is our piece of lower quartzite. Just so we know what we're doing, let's colour it in. There. Continuing in the same vein, now let's find where the top of this grey pipe rock comes down. It's this boundary here, it comes down, 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 just gets to sea level at the head of Loch Do here, and we can find it again over here on the north side of Loch Glen Cool. Join those up as a structure contour of zero meters value for the top of the pipe rock. Measure where that is. So let's go back to our measuring, put this on the reference point. Here we go past the zero meter contour for the quartzite, the zero meter contour for the base of the pipe rock, and there it is for the top pipe rock, TPR. Take that information back to the profile, line up our strip with our reference point, measure back along zero meters, it's the zero meter structure contour, to the top of the pipe rock. So that's where the top of the pipe rock is at sea level, join it up to where it is at outcrop, and there goes our boundary for the pipe rock. Again, let's just color it in so we know what we're doing. And there's the pipe rock going down to sea level. Of course we could add precision in here, we just joined up two dots of zero meters and wherever the boundary is at, at outcrop. We could draw intermediate structure contours for the 50, 100 uh, and 150 meter um, elevations and add information uh, in between these two points. But we'll just keep it simple for now. Now let's turn our attention to the Glencore thrust, which for the most part is parallel to the top of the pipe rock, just separated from it by this thin veneer of brown fucoid beds on the map. Okay, so we can trace that like this, but it doesn't quite come down to sea level, the thrust. And on this side, particularly, the thrust almost gets to sea level, but then runs just above the shoreline till it reaches this position further back in Glencool. So we can take some of this insight onto the cross section. We can take our thrust down like this to almost sea level, but then we're going to have to make a decision. So I'm going to stop a minute and have a think. The thrust runs here just above sea level and then comes down to the valley bottom here. So let's assume that this is where the thrust cuts down to zero meters down and we can simply project that information onto the line of cross section. I'll just put a pencil to show where it is, somewhere like that. And we just take it along the same trend as these structure contours. So at that point in the subsurface is where the thrust is at sea level. Well, to find that, we just have to measure back from our reference point again. So let's take our map strip, line it up, put it along the section line, that's where we've just made that decision. So that is Glencore thrust at zero meters. Take that information now onto our profile. There. So to complete the section, we just have to join that up. So we take our Glencore thrust. It doesn't go to sea level, so it just lies above sea level somehow and then dives down into the subsurface. Let's color this in. So this is the Glencore thrust sheet. Something like this. An exciting watch me colouring in a cross section. Let's add the Lewis in of the Fallen now so we see what we've got. Cross section almost finished. 
So let's just be explicit. Here's the thrust coming along here. I'll just bring it in so we can actually see what we mean. It's coming along here at the base of that Lewisian sheet like this, presumably moving in this direction. So that is Lewisian of the, I'll just write Lou, of the Glen Cool thrust sheet. Okay, this is Lewisian of the Foreland. The quartzites, I'll just again bring that out. There's the unconformity. Unk. We've got the pipe rock coming down here, more or less conformable with the lower quartzite that sits beneath it. We've got a little veneer of fucoid beds here, which I could colour in, but it's a bit thin. But in this position in here, what's going on there in that area? Well, we don't know. That's for another day. But there's our working cross-section for now. Let's tidy it up. Put the scale over here, 250, 500 meters. Be explicit that vertical and horizontal scales are equal. Orient the section. And label it section through Ed Daloch, which is the name of this landscape. So there you have it, a stepwise approach to quickly drawing a working cross-section through a part of a geological map.